Hi, I'm Mayor Lana Natchew, and I'm pleased to share the highlights of the April 12, 2022 Sturgeon County Council meeting. The meeting started off with a presentation from the chair of the Agribusiness and Agritourism Review Task Force. This task force was appointed last year to provide recommendations on how Sturgeon County could manage and support agribusiness and agritourism in the county. The task was challenging, and I wish to thank all of the members for their hard work over the past several months. Council accepted the task force's final recommendation report as information, and we have directed administration to come back with a proposed implementation strategy for consideration at our May 3rd meeting. This would include proposed amendments to the land use bylaw. And as always, with any amendments to the land use bylaw, there would be a public hearing where the public could provide their input on the proposed changes for Council's consideration. More information on the task force, including the recommendations in the report, can be found on our website at sturgeoncounty.ca slash agrareview. At our most recent Council meeting, we also had a public hearing for bylaw 157122, which proposes to redistrict a parcel of land directly across from the existing Meadowview Golf and Country Club from ag to recreation. I want to thank all of those who wrote to Council and took the time to attend the public hearing to share their perspectives on the proposed redistricting. Council will be considering all submissions and will be making a decision on the proposal at a future Council meeting. On another note, Council also received the Open Space Plan Review and updated and adopted four policies and 15 recommended actions to help us guide the responsible stewardship of 175,000 acres of open space in Sturgeon County. As well, during our April 12th meeting, we gave third reading to bylaw 157022, adding regulations to our land use bylaw for managing data processing facilities. The bylaw is an important one as it helps us to mitigate potential concerns with data processing facilities, such as noise levels and frequency, as well as aesthetics of any proposed development. There is a lot of discussion around these facilities. But I want to emphasize that the passing of this bylaw is not an approval of any existing or proposed data processing facility. Rather, the bylaw will help ensure that when any facilities are proposed, we have the mechanisms to help protect our residents from the noise and ensure that they aren't an eyesore. Continuing with the theme of quality of life, Council approved changes to our fees and charges bylaw to include construction costs associated with the county's broadband initiative. The change will allow us to help determine the cost for property owners in the extended service area who wish to have broadband conduit and fiber installed on their property. I've already received questions from people about the initiative and why not everyone in Phase 1 area is being connected directly. Council had allocated $7.3 million for this first phase and that amount covers approximately 52% of the properties in that Phase 1 region. So while we haven't estimated what it would cost to complete the entire region, it's easy to see that it would be significantly more than what the county can manage on its own at this time. We hope to see some changes in the federal and provincial grant funding models in the future so that we don't have to fund this work alone. Property owners can use the broadband availability map to see the construction route and determine if their property is part of the core service area or the extended service area. And for those in the extended service area, there is an opportunity to bring broadband service to your door at your own cost. We are also encouraging neighbours to come together and help share the cost of extending the fibre network into their respective areas. Those who choose to stay on a wireless network will likely experience better service as more people move to the county's fibre broadband service, thereby reducing demand on towers. We are in the process of arranging public information sessions for residents to learn more about the project being planned for early May. Watch for information coming to your mailbox in the next couple of weeks. In the meantime, more information can be found on the county website at sturgeoncounty.ca slash getconnected. While the county has various programs and services to help support quality of life for residents, there are a number of community groups and associations that contribute to this as well. Supporting these groups is an important part of Council's work and we recently approved over $300,000 in grants to local groups. Thank you to the members of the Callahoo Villeneuve Sand and Gravel Advisory Committee and the Community Services Advisory Board who reviewed all of the grant applications and prepared the recommendations for Council's consideration. A full listing of the grant recipients can be found in the Council Agenda Package for April 12th. Council also approved road construction contract awards for Glory Hill Subdivision and Rolana Park Rehabilitation and the Hillsborough Estates Subdivision Surfacing. 
The total cost of these two contracts is over $7 million, which demonstrates Council's commitment to improving infrastructure in the county. Our final bit of news was the approval of the Clean Energy Improvement Program, or SEEP. Through the SEEP, the county will be able to provide financing to residential and commercial property owners to make energy efficiency renewable energy upgrades for up to 100% of the project's costs. This type of financing ties the loan to the property, not the property owner. So if the property is sold, the amount can either be paid or just attached to the new tax roll. The county will be launching the residential program first to be followed by the non-residential program. Sturgeon County is one of the first rural municipalities in Alberta to launch this program and we're proud to do that. The Alberta Municipal Services Corporation will provide technical support throughout the development of the program and lead core implementation tasks. And we'll also be sharing information with local contractors who may be able to provide services as part of the program. We're looking forward to launching this early in 2023. Those are the highlights of the April 12th meeting. More information can be found at the link below. As a result of some meeting date changes, the next Sturgeon County Council meeting will be held at 3 o'clock on April 22nd. Check out the website at sturgeoncounty.ca slash council meetings to check the dates of upcoming meetings. I hope you are able to join us on April 22nd. Until then, stay safe and be well.